Hello everyone, in this video we are going to see how to install a git server on Windows Server. So we are going to see how to host a git server and also how to install the git client on a Windows 10 machine and of course um, test cloning and pushing some repositories. So first I want to present to you the product that we are going to install in this video and this is called Bonobo git server. Uh, this is a very nice and very simple git server that is http or https based and the, the cool thing is the repositories can be obtained via http or https but it also has a very nice uh, web front end for administration so for creating repositories and administering them uh, another very nice thing for all of you guys that uh, are in big enterprises is that this git server can be integrated with Active Directory which means that it supports granting different repository access rights based on uh, teams which are actually mapped to Active Directory groups but we will see this a little later and if you want to check out uh, some more info about uh, Bonobo Git server and also download it, uh, you have here the link. So let's talk a little more about uh, the Active Directory integration because in this video I am going to show you how to uh, perform this integration. So we are going to use Active Directory groups for uh, granting uh, rights. Basically the first thing is that the website supports single sign-on for authorized users. This means that if you and your computer are logged on with a user that is also authorized to access the website, you will not be prompted again for permissions. Then the next thing related to this AD integration is that for different access rights, you can use Active Directory groups that are mapped to internal Bonobo items. And uh, here are the three items that um, we will be covering. First is the Bonobo users. So these are all the users that should access the site. So any user that should uh, clone repositories or should access the website need to be placed in this uh, item and this can be mapped to an Active Directory group. Also you need to create this, so this is mandatory, because any user that should use the site should be in this group. The next item is the Bonobo admins, so different from the users, the admins have administrative traitor rights on the website, which means they can create repositories and do different uh, things uh, to uh, the Bonobo installation. This is also mandatory because otherwise without this group you will not be able to have uh, repositories created. And the last uh, item is teams. So in Bonobo you can create teams and for each team you can create also an Active Directory group to map it to that team. For example, you can create a team called devs and one called ops and also two Active Directory groups in which you place different people and uh, you have the possibility to grant permissions on repositories uh, either to devs or to ops or maybe repositories where both teams uh, should collaborate. Uh, this is not mandatory, this is optional. So the only things that are mandatory is to have a group for users and one for admins. We will see all of this uh, during the practical uh, part of the video and I assure you it's uh, easier than it sounds at the moment. Now let's see what we are actually going to do in this video. So before uh, uh, configuring stuff, please go and download the Bonobo Git server. I placed here the link for the newest release, but uh, I encourage you to go directly to the site and download a newer one if it's available. Uh, also, you have to download the Git client. I placed also for this one the link directly, but I encourage you to download the newest one if possible. 
Um, and after these two, we can also prepare the Active Directory groups so we get them out of the way. Then uh, we can go ahead and configure the git server prerequisites, so install all the roles and the folders and stuff. Then we can install the Bonobo git server itself and configure it. After that we move to the client part and install the git client on a Windows 10 machine. And with all that being done we can go ahead and test our git server. So we'll log on to the website, create some repositories and use the git client to clone repositories and push data to them. And before we begin, I want to mention that in this video the git server will be implemented using HTTP, but if you are going to use it in production, please, please, pretty please, use HTTPS, because um, the way the credentials are passed to the server is with basic authentication, meaning uh, basically the password in clear text, so you have to use HTTPS to encrypt that traffic. Okay. So now let's uh, start with the configuration part and first let's get the Active Directory groups and users out of the way. For this video I prepared two test users, user 100 and 101 and I created four groups. First is the git users group and uh, uh, before I go on the names of the groups can be different so you can use your organization's naming convention because all of these names will be uh, placed in a configuration file as you will see a little later. Uh, but uh, getting back to the groups part, in git users I placed the two users that I created. Then we have git admins and in admins I only placed user 100 the administrator can be deleted as it doesn't count. So this will be the only user that can uh, create repositories at the moment. And I created two groups that will be mapped to uh, two different Bonobo teams. Git group 1, Git, git uh, group 2. In group 1 I placed user 100, in uh, group uh, 2 I placed user 101. Pretty simple setup. So this is the Active Directory part, nothing too uh, interesting or too exciting. Let's uh, now go to my Windows 10 machine where we can start uh, the configuration of the server and uh, of the client. Okay, so uh, we are now on a Windows 10 machine from my test environment and uh, first we are going to uh, configure the server. I am connected to the server using PowerShell Remoting. This is the name of my server, git01. Uh, and I already placed the uh, git server zip file uh, in C, as you can see here. And uh, also a, a file called webconfig, also I placed it in C. And this file along with all the scripts can be downloaded from my GitHub repository that is linked in the description of the video. So let's first create the directory where we will place our git site. Okay, the sites directory has been created. And uh, let's now install all the needed roles and features. And uh, this installation should not take, I guess, longer than uh, maximum two minutes. And actually for me this was pretty fast. So let's move on. Uh, the uh, first thing I do always actually when I install the web server role on Windows is to remove the default website because I never use it. So let's remove it to be rid of it. And for our git uh, server let's create a new application pool which I named here Bonobo git ap. And the application pool has been created. Next we are going actually to uh, install the website itself. So uh, the first thing we are going to do 
is expand the archive with the files for the website directly in the c slash sites folder. Next, let's create a new website and here if you are going to use it in production, please be very careful. Uh, instead of port 80, please make it port 443 and uh, make it SSL. Uh, use the SSL flag and you will also have to attach to it a certificate. But in this test environment, we can use directly HTTP. The website has been created. Uh, now the next thing I always like to do is to harden the security a little because why not and uh, for this actually this is not needed and for this we are going to uh, use the following commands from here to here. Let's run all of them. So now um, the security should be a little better. We removed the built-in users and we added the IIS application pool identity. Uh, now, next, let's copy the web config file from C. So I told you I placed it in C and let's copy it to our Bonobo Git server folder. This will contain all of our configuration, which I will show you in a moment. And to make the settings stick, let's stop the website and start it again. Basically, we restarted our website. So now the configuration of the Bonobo server is done. Let me show you what you need to do for it to work in your environment. So um, this is the way the web config will look like. And in your case, what you need to modify is the domain that you will use of course enter your own domain and then for the uh, members group name you remember i created a group called git users in your case create a group with uh, whichever name you want and place it here then the next line contains the bonobo team which is mapped to a specific active directory group uh, you can remove this line altogether if you don't need it or you can replace uh, these names with whatever works for your environment and the next thing you will have to do is to set the administrator group in my case it's called git admins but for you if it's called differently just place the correct name here and you are done so this is what you will have to do before you copy the web config in your Bonobo folder. So uh, now basically the server is done. We can move on to the client part to also configure our Windows 10 Git installation. So let's exit from our server. Now uh, I'm directly on my Windows 10 machine with the PowerShell console. And let's move on to the client script. So the first thing I want to do is to install git client itself. So I placed the git.exe in the C drive of my Windows 10 machine. And I also placed the git.inf also on the C drive. The git.inf can also be downloaded from the GitHub repository. So just run this command and uh, git should install. So now git is installed. Let's create a folder for our repositories. Folder created. And uh, for this folder, uh, let's add the two users, user 100 and user 101 with modify permissions so they can uh, clone the repositories from our git server. So run this block of code. The permissions now should be set. So uh, uh, basically, the next thing we can do is actually test the Git server itself. Now, uh, for this first, let me give you a short walkthrough of how the 
site looks like i have this uh, edge browser opened as user 100 and if you remember user 100 is an administrator on the site so let's connect to it and now basically i should be logged on to the website automatically because uh, we have a single sign-on enabled unfortunately um, i logged on but seems that i am not <laughs> seen yet as an administrator so what i will do actually uh, in this moment is restart the website for the uh, server again uh, sometimes this can happen when you first install it So normally now if we stop the website then we started again and we log on again to the site it should normally see me uh, correctly. So let's open a new tab and okay so i needed actually to uh, close the browser and open it again and now when i log on with the user 100 you see that i am seen as an administrator because because i uh, got the create new repository button and uh, i have uh, a couple of things to select from here so first let me show you in the users tab you can see a list of all your imported users for from active directory if I go to user 100, for example, I see that it's an administrator. User 101 is just a normal user. I also have a list of the teams that I have uh, uh, put in the web config file. And in developers, for example, I have user 100. In operations, I have user 101. In settings, I can make a couple of global settings to the Bonobo Git server and in the repositories i can see all the existing repositories and create new ones let me show you how to create a new repository just press on the button just give the repository a name test one for example you can also um, configure groups for the repositories so you can group uh, multiple similar repositories together let me show you so uh, we will put it in group one you can also write a short description uh, you see that you have also a couple of other settings here but the important thing is that you see that the administrator of this repository of course is user 100 because he is an administrator on the site but you can also add uh, independent users as contributors as you see here so i could add user 100 but i can also add a, a specific team as a contributor so for example maybe i want all the developers to be able to uh, contribute to this uh, repository i can create it so now you see that i have group one with test one as the repository and i can expand it or not if I want to let's create a new repository also uh, to test for user 101 test 2 this one will be in a different group we name it just a test and for this one I want to remain administrator but I am going to give the operations team or actually I'm going to let only user 101 be a contributor to this repository so now i have two groups and in each one i have one repository this is basically the way it uh, works now uh, with these two repositories created i can go ahead and also test how to clone and uh, push to those repositories so i have two powershell windows open here one with user 100 one with user 101 first uh, let's clone the test one repository which is meant for user 100 
so we are going to navigate into the repos folder and we are going to clone this repository unfortunately i installed git um, after i opened these uh, powershell windows so i have to open them again so let's get back to business first let's navigate to the repos folder and again now let's clone the git the test one git repository and the first time you will do this you will have to enter your credentials because git stores the credentials in the windows credential manager so we enter the username and the password and now uh, it should be cloned you see in the repos folder we have test one and a notice about the credentials part whenever you change the password for a user that uses git you also have to update its credentials in the credential manager of that machine so please be aware of uh, this fact uh, now before we go and actually work with the repository let's also edit the configuration for the user meaning the username and the email address and uh, uh, when you run this command a text editor opens in the powershell window which is a little strange if you're not used to linux but do as i do and you will be okay first press the letter i now after you press i just delete these two uh, pound signs for name and email write uh, what you know is correct for me this is okay after you are done just press escape then press a semicolon and you can see it right here and press x and enter so uh, now your configuration for user 100 is saved the next thing uh, we can do is actually put something in this repository so we can test a push uh, so let's go here let's take the git file and in test one let's put the git file and in uh, our powershell window now let's navigate to the repository test one let's add the new file to be tracked let's commit the changes And now let's push this file back to the repository. Okay, so if we go back to the website for user 100 and we refresh the site first, let's go to our test one repository, go to repository browser and you see our file so the commit actually worked so uh, this was the presentation of the site for user 100 which is an administrator let's also log on with user 101 user 101 is not an administrator so we don't have too many options here and at the same time he only sees the repositories that he is a contributor to which in this case is only uh, test 2 so let's uh, test also for uh, this user the part at least of uh, cloning the repository let's navigate to repos and let's clone the test 2 repository actually first i'm going to show you what happens if i try to clone test 1 so let's try test one and uh, let's actually delete test one so we can see that it will not work let's delete it let's try another time to clone it 
I am asked uh, for the credentials, of course, because it's the first time this user is uh, using Git. And you see that we are not authorized to uh, clone test one. But if I try to clone test two, then it should work. And because for uh, test one it did not work, my credentials actually were not saved. So now uh, you see you appear to have cloned an empty repository. So uh, this worked. And yeah, now uh, you can do whatever you want. You, if I delete it and clone it again, of course it will work every time. And you see the credentials are not needed anymore. So uh, basically this was it for a simple implementation of a Git server running on Windows that is integrated with uh, Active Directory. If you enjoyed the video or if it uh, helped you, then please like the video also share it and uh, consider subscribing if you want to be notified of new uploads from uh, my channel. Thanks a lot for watching.